Raise your hand if you would have voted for the debt ceiling deal last spring that prevented the country from going into default. Everyone but Mr. Regenberg is a yes on that one. And, and Mr. Regenberg, why don't we talk about this for a second? You, you've been a standout on, on this issue. And I'm curious, would you still have voted no if you were the deciding vote? In other words, if it would have killed the bill? Uh, absolutely. If, if the, if the question we received was not how would you vote uh, if you were this, the deciding factor. In that case, obviously, you have to vote yes. That wasn't the situation. The situation was that Kevin McCarthy took our economy hostage in order to push through dangerous Republican cuts to critical programs. Hang on. It was an up or down vote, Mr. Regenberg. Yes or no? Would you have voted for the debt ceiling bill? Yes, absolutely. If, it, if you're the deciding factor, absolutely. My position is the same position. Hang on one second. My please. position is the same position as that of Senator Elizabeth Warren, Ed Markey, John Fetterman, reps like Katie Porter and Barbara Lee, folks in leadership like Rosa DeLauro and uh, even more moderate reps like Dan Goldman and Adriano Espiat. Mr. Amo, you want to weigh in? So Aaron has said that he would vote to take this country into catastrophic default. That is saying that he knows better than Jack Reed, Sheldon Whitehouse, David Cicilline, and Seth Magaziner. I would have voted to stand with Rhode Islanders, not vote against Rhode Islanders. This is not a time to play politics with people's economic outcomes. Well, we'll go to Mr. Regenberg briefly, and I'll come over to the left-hand side. Again, Kevin McCarthy said that he had the Republican votes to deliver on this deal. Given that, a number of leading Democrats said, we didn't need to cheerlead for a Republican deal. I'm really glad that President Biden negotiated, I think, the best deal he possibly could have. It was still a hostage situation. And a lot of leading Democrats said we need to send a message about the precedent of Republicans every time the debt ceiling comes up, being able to hold the economy hostage. Again, this is a deal that had cuts to, to um, food okay, stamps we, we for seniors. Ms. Cano. Uh, hang on, please. Yeah. Hang on, please, Ms. Gazzotta. Implications would happen to working families in Rhode Island. And for us, we need to think about the people that we represent. And let's think about a SNAP program, Social Security benefits for seniors. That is what it was in the line. So if we are going to send someone to Congress, it needs to be someone that is going to protect all Rhode Islanders instead of playing the same. Ms. Matos, I'll give you a quick word here. Uh, Mr. Robert just said... Um, the opposite of what he has said publicly before. He tweeted that we would have voted no on the debt ceiling. That's risky. And we have to think about the consequences that we're having as a country for having this fight over the debt ceiling over and over. Fish just lowered the credit rating for the United States from AAA to uh, AA plus. Those are the things that happens when we have that type of fight. And we're playing with people's life and wealth and incomes and people that are depending on Social Security and Medicare when we take those fights just because we want to show our political Mr. allies. I'll get back to you in a minute, Mr. Regenberg. Mr. Yeah. Gonzalez. I'm the other progressive on this stage, but I would be very pragmatic on this issue. This is about putting people first. So ultimately, what was on the line was Social Security, Medicare, and that is just a very irresponsible position for Mr. Regenberg to take. Our economy was certainly held hostage. We need to hold Republicans accountable for that. But to not vote in favor of this is largely irresponsible. Ms. Gazzotta. Yes, and can, I agree? Uh, can we please have quiet in the auditorium? It's the same thing. We, we were playing with people, health insurance, uh, with Medicaid, with Social Security, and so many other people who depend on the check. We have people who are one check behind to become uh, lost their home. Then I think that it was very irresponsible for Mr. Aaron to say that he would vote no on We're, that decision. Uh, I'll get to you, Mr. Regenberg. We're going to wrap this up briefly for Mr. Casey and then Mr. Burbrick. Go. Everybody's beat up Mr. Regenberg pretty well on this, but the issue, the issue is that it's completely irresponsible. It's like defaulting on your mortgage, just letting everything go. We, we wouldn't be able to to do anything here. I, th I think it's completely irresponsible, and it seemed like more of a game. All right, Mr. Burbrick. Yeah, look, I, I mean, it's dangerous, it's irresponsible, but it speaks to Aaron's uh, dishonesty and lack of integrity, because he, he said uh, four, four months ago, early on in this, that he would vote against it. Uh, Again, the question that we received from reporters was not how would you vote, as Tim just asked, if you were the deciding vote. In that case, obviously you have to vote yes. The question we received was how would you vote given the situation, which was that Kevin McCarthy said he could deliver Republican votes for a Republican deal. Many leading Democrats said given that, we don't need to cheerlead this Republican deal. Senator Elizabeth Warren, people like Jerry Nadler in leadership, um, I, feel very com I feel very comfortable with the company I keep on this analysis. 
to be clear, Briefly. I, don't hold, I don't hold it against we're members on. of Congress who have a different analysis on this. It's a complicated situation. I've been in the legislature. I understand that some these I think, I think everyone's position on this is clear. So let's move to health care. 